Uh, welcome everyone to the uh, solving wordle with Python and Selenium and running that in Gradle Git GitHub Actions by Michael Mintz. We are glad uh, Michael can uh, join us today. All right, thanks Nidhi. Hello everybody and welcome to Selenium Conference India 2022. Uh, in today's presentation, I'll be using Python and Selenium in order to solve Wordle. And uh, there are a few different versions of the Wordle website. So if anyone is not familiar with Wordle, it pretty much uh, looks like this. You get to guess letters and figure out what the correct word is. And if you get a, a yellow letter, it means that the letter is not in the correct place. And if you uh, get a green letter, it means that uh, it is in the correct place. So I'm going to start a screen share so that you can uh, start seeing everything that I see. Uh, this is what Wordle looks like. Uh, you have uh, yellow letters, and you have green letters, and you have to guess the correct word. And it gives you hints by telling you what letters are in the correct place and which letters are in the incorrect place. So we can use automation to solve Wordle. So if we do pytest, wordletest.py, it's going to run a Python program that guesses Wordle for you. So it's going to load up the page with Selenium, and then it's going to start guessing words, and it's going to take the hints that it has there and try to figure out the correct word. So here it's now on the fourth try. And there you have it. It solved it in five tries bluff. So if you're wondering what that script looks like, this is the Wordle test. It's some simple Python, but essentially, it's going to open up the New York Times website, which has the Wordle game. And then it's going to initialize the word list, which basically uh, searches through a pre existing list of words so that you can see, uh, so that it can generate a full list from that and use that to make guesses. Now, the full Wordle list does not include all possible five-letter words. They've basically pruned the list in order to uh, make it so that maybe bad five-letter words don't show up as possible solutions. That way, it's still you know um, friendly, kid-friendly, et cetera. So uh, if anyone is wondering how that script works, there is a Python web automation framework that I created called Selenium Base that essentially allows you to work with Shadow DOM more easily, click elements. It automatically waits for page elements to fully load uh, before interacting with them so that you don't need additional sleeps or waits in the code. Uh, this Selenium base is available on GitHub. It's open source, so you can see all the code if you're interested. Uh, particular examples that we run are found in the Selenium base examples folder. And there's hundreds of different examples. And in particular here, the ones that we are going for are the Wordle test. And basically, it goes through. It uses the algorithm to determine whether or not the yellow letter is there or a green letter so that it can guess the correct word based on the hints that it had. I'll run it one more time just so that you can see it in action. Yeah, the, the Selenium based tests run with PyTest. So I can do PyTest wordletest.py and it'll automatically uh, spin up the web browser and start playing Wordle. So you can see here, it's guessing letters. And here we go. Once again, it guessed it in five tries. But every time it runs, it runs a little bit differently because it's using a randomized algorithm. Now, in the about a month ago, uh, 
the website had a full redesign and they got rid of all their shadow DOM elements, which basically is a page within the page. So in order to show you how it looked on the original site, we can use the web archive in order to see the original Wordle page before they changed it. So if we do pytest wordle archive test.py, it's going to open up the web archive, which is basically a copy of all past websites so that you can see how the Wordle game did in previous renditions. So this is, it's going to be a different word than you saw before because it's using an existing version of the website that was there previously. So it guessed ample in three tries there. And if you're wondering exactly how the, that website looks underneath, we're going to open it with the web archive so that you can see the shadow DOM that's there. So I'm going to right click and inspect the element, which basically allows you to see the HTML source for the page. And inside, if you can see clearly here, I'm going to expand it so that you can see a little more clearly. Inside this website, there are these shadow root elements. And shadow root and is, is basically the shadow document object model, which basically has a website inside a website. And interacting with these uh, shadow elements, uh, in order to do that, you need Selenium 4, and you need uh, the latest version of Chrome or a Chromium browser. And from there, you're able to interact with the Shadow DOM elements in order to click the buttons and pretty much interact with the page. Now, the shadow roots definitely complicate uh, the interaction with a web page because you have to specifically jump into the shadow root before interacting with it. So if you wanted to say, click a specific button, I'm just gonna exit out of there. You need to basically interact using the shadow root because you'll switch in and then you'll click inside. So if we were to go into the script that interacts with the shadow DOM, uh, we have here the test Wordle archive test. You'll see that it uses a special syntax such as here to interact with the shadow DOM elements more easily than you would if you were going to directly use a Selenium command to do that. So it uses the colon colon shadow selector. It's basically a unique selector to Selenium base, but essentially it'll go to this selector, it'll jump into the shadow root that is there, and then it will look inside for another element, and then it will let you jump inside the shadow root again so that you can click the game icon. For instance, here, this lets you close the initial screen that pops up whenever you go to Wordle for the first time. So this is interacting with shadow root elements using Wordle. So now that we have that, uh, let's jump back into uh, the example that we have here. So. Essentially, if you weren't using Selenium base to get to the shadow root, you'd need to use a command such as this to click it. And it gets much longer because you have to individually pierce the shadow root elements. So first you could do something with Python driver.findElement by CSS selector, the game app, and then you could do dot shadow root. And dot shadow root will then take you inside the first level of shadow root. And then from there, you'd have to find another element inside of it and then keep going through the shadow root so that it becomes a significantly long line. However, uh, with Selenium base, 
it simplifies the interaction with shadow root so that this giant line here can be done entirely with just a self.click line, uh, self.click, game app, and then it pierces through the shadow root and lets you uh, basically interact. I'm going to run that test again so that you can see it interacting with the particular shadow roots from the Wordle archive website. So it's loading in now, and this is the version that has the shadow root. And it's picking a random uh, Wordle from the past. These are some terrible words here that it's guessing. Let's see. Guess that in three tries. I'll run it again just so that you can see that it's going to pick a completely uh, random version of Wordle from the past. And every time it runs, it's going to guess different words in order to get to the final word. And let's see. Try number four, shall. OK, so here the word was shall, and it took four different tries to guess that. So if you're wondering how to run any of these example scripts that you see here, all that is accessible from the Selenium-based website, where you'll find examples like this and many others. So let's see. The one that we just ran here with the shadow root, that is the Wordle archive test. And I'll just walk through how the whole script works. So. First, uh, it's going to generate a random uh, Wordle from the past using the existing format that is set up for it. So if you look inside this page here, you'll see that it uses the web archive, which basically allows you to see a past version of a website. If, say, a website later changes, you can go back to a very specific date so here, 2022, uh, this one was April 17th, and it had a timestamp from that day, and it used uh, the Wordle website. So it basically went through and found the past Wordle in order to get to that. So I generate a URL that looks like this from here so that I can get to the past Wordle version, and then I initialize the word list, and then I basically pick a random word. So I do word equals random.choice self.wordlist. In Python, this random.choice essentially lets me pick a random item from a list of words. And the self.wordlist, I already pre-calculated pre uh, at the beginning, which basically has all possible five-letter words that will be available when you're guessing Wordle. So random.choice gave me a random word. And when I started guessing, I basically mapped out the various letters inside Wordle so that I can click the buttons. And after I go through a round of guesses, I basically um, try to calculate what uh, letters are yellow and what letters are green, because that will tell me uh, whether or not I've guessed a correct letter or a letter is not in the correct place. And it goes through this algorithm at the top here where I modify the word list, where essentially, based on the hints that it gives me, I prune out words that are no longer possible because the letter isn't there or uh, it's not in the right place, et cetera. And therefore, I keep shortening the list of guesses that I have until eventually I keep uh, clicking through and there are no other guesses that I can do. And I'll eventually reach the correct word 
hopefully in the six attempts that I have. So I'm going to run the Wordle test on the latest version of the New York Times website. And it's going to run a little faster because it doesn't have to deal with the Shadow DOM because they changed the website. So here, it guessed Lipid. Uh, it saw that the L was not in the correct place. So it's going to use those hints in order to try to guess the correct word. And as you can see here, it took those hints. And we basically uh, solved Wordle. And you can run it every time. And every time, it's going to run a little different because it's using a randomized word generator that basically will sift through all the words that are still valid. All right, so let's go back to the main thing. So uh, just want to make sure I'm covering all the main things that I want to cover in the presentation. Why are we automating Wordle? Well, it's fun to use Selenium to play games and solve puzzles that aren't necessarily uh, around uh, test automation because Selenium isn't just for uh, automating testing of websites. It's used well for basically automating all sorts of tasks that uh, pretty much anything that you want to automate on the web. Uh, anything where there's a web page, you can interact with the elements and essentially make anything possible. Uh, now that we have Wordle running, we can now take the script and run it inside GitHub Actions. So now that we have that, let's take a look at um, one of the GitHub Actions that I have running that's actually solving Wordle. So you'll see here uh, in the MD Min Selenium Base Examples under GitHub, you have GitHub Actions. And if you click on, say, the top one, you'll see that the script has been running on Ubuntu, Mac OS, Windows, et cetera. So let's see. If we click on one of them, and we jump all the way to the Wordle test, you'll see that the word it guessed was bluff. And it got it in five attempts. So this is an example of using GitHub Actions in order to run Wordle. And if you're wondering how exactly to generate the script for this, uh, let's see, that. Uh, GitHub Actions file will look like this. For instance, for Python, Python package.yml, and the .yml file represents YAML format, which is the format that you'll likely be using when creating automation to run in GitHub Actions. So to create that file, you could set it to run on a cron schedule, which is what I did which basically means it'll run at the 30th minute of every hour. And it will run on the main branch. And you can specify all the various uh, OSs that you want to run on, such as Ubuntu 20.04, Mac OS, Windows, et cetera, and the Python versions. So right now, I'm running that script on 3.7, 3.8, 3.9, 3.10. Uh, you set up the matrix, uh, you'd install dependencies, and the main one is uh, Selenium Base, which is part of the requirements file. And you run python setup.py install from the git clone, and you'd also install Google Chrome. You can also install Edge and run it there as well. And once you've uh, install the drivers. And you can do that with a command such as Selenium base install Chrome driver or Selenium base install Edge driver or Gecko driver, et cetera. Those will download the automatically the Selenium base web drivers that you need in order to interact with the web browsers that you're spinning up. So from that script, uh, there's multiple different examples here. 
And the one particular, it's the Wordle test. And I run that at the very end. And in case it can't get it in the six guesses that it has, well, it's not a total guess because it's using hints. So it's very educated guesses where it prunes out the words. Uh, a command such as dash dash reruns equals five, it's basically a PyTest option, uh, which will allow you to rerun a script if it fails. And the case that Wordle, because there's a lot of randomization involved, if it's like a really tough word to guess, then I make sure that there's plenty of room to get that word so that when it actually runs in GitHub Actions, you can see, all right, I want to know how it's running on the latest version of Windows. And it runs a script. And let's see here, it took six attempts to get bluff, et cetera. So this is GitHub Actions. And it's really easy to just work from an existing um, .yaml file in order to set this up. Uh, I'm going to go into the chat box and see if I can answer people's questions. Oh, can you provide the GitHub repo link? Absolutely. So the GitHub repo link for Selenium Base, I'm just going to copy that and post that into the chat. So that is the link to the main GitHub page. If you're wondering where all these GitHub actions are running, so that is just this link here. I'm going to copy that into there. So that's the GitHub actions that's basically running all those Wordle solver tests on continuous integration. And GitHub actions is one of many different continuous integration systems. Jenkins is another popular one. Uh, there's GitLab. Uh, here we're using GitHub Actions because it's completely free for open source projects. So if anyone wants to run their own workflows on a cron schedule, they can easily do that for free. And if people aren't sure how to create a new workflow, you can go into Actions New Workflow, and it'll even show you how to get started so that you can start creating uh, your Python packages, et cetera, that uh, you might want in order to basically create a whole GitHub Actions workflow for that. And you can use like Anaconda. There's a Python application. There's a published Python package or just Python package, which is the simple one that I used and it helps you get set up. But if you're looking to run something more advanced, uh, you can use the existing scripts that I've already created. And if you're wondering just a little bit more about the GitHub actions for the Selenium base examples, all that can be found in the, uh, let's see, I've got an MD Mints GitHub folder, Selenium base examples. And if you go into .github slash workflows, uh, this is ge the general location that you'll find uh, your GitHub action scripts. And that's where you'll find your Python package.yml file. And you'll immediately get the script there where you can set the cron schedule. And you can set how many parallel uh, tests to run at the same time, such as here. You basically copy paste the script and then modify it. You can easily make changes so that everything is already set up and ready to run. It automatically takes care of installing web browsers for you for your tests, as well as showing you how to structure uh, a test run. And if you're wondering, you've probably been looking and seeing that we're using PyTest to run all the scripts. And PyTest is essentially a uh, Python unit testing framework. I know I'm going a little bit out of order, jumping around, like getting to the main examples, then going back, taking a step back and saying, oh, by the way, PyTest is used to run all the scripts that you see here. And it's probably Python's most powerful unit testing framework. 
it gives you a nice structure and gives you like output so that you can see what's going on and you can even uh, generate a fancy report. So let's say I run the script again and I wanna add a few additional command line options such as dash dash dashboard and dash dash HTML equals report dot HTML. If I run the Wordle test now, it's going to uh, create a dashboard and a full test report of everything so that you can see exactly how uh, everything looks uh, as a test report. And PyTest HTML reports uh, is a common PyTest feature. So I'm running it again, but this time I use the advanced command line options so that I can generate the report.html file. So if I open that, you'll see that it's generated uh, basically a dashboard. It was one test that ran and it passed and you get a nice little pie chart. And it shows you that it ran the Wordle test and it took a duration of 26.67 seconds. And it also shows you useful things such as in your environment, what your um, platform was, which was Mac OS here, uh, the PyTest version that you had, the different plugins that you had. So this right here is PyTest HTML with the Selenium-based dashboard included. So you'll see the PyTest HTML version and other plugins such as Xdist, which lets you run PyTest tests multi-threaded. Uh, there are also other plugins that can be used such as rerun failures, which will let you rerun failing tests. Uh, I'm just gonna make it a little bigger because you probably can't see it when it's small. Rerun failures, which lets you rerun a failing test. You can use PyTest ordering to set the order of tests, et cetera. And of course there's Selenium Base, which is the PyTest plugin that lets you uh, do browser automation and everything like that. So it ran one test and it gave you the output there. And if you're wondering a little bit more, a more simple example of Selenium base, since we jumped right into some of the most complex tests that you'll have, uh, if we wanted to do a much more simpler test, such as let's go to Test Swag Labs. I think they're, they are one of the, so, so Swag Labs is the Sauce Demo website. It's one of the sponsors of Selenium Comp. They have a nice e-commerce website where you can essentially uh, log in, add an item to a cart and then check out. So if you're wondering how Selenium Base works, there's lots of simple methods such as type so that you can type into, um, a CSS selector, it, which is the default, which makes it easier so you don't, you don't have to specify whether or not it's XPath or CSS, it'll auto detect. And then it will go through, uh, I'll show you what the website looks like just so that you can see how Sauce Demo works. So it's a pretty uh, easy website for basically doing all sorts of things on an e-commerce website. It gives you the login information at the bottom, standard user, and then the password for all users is secret sauce. You log in, you can add an item to a cart. Uh, once you've added the item to a cart, you should be able to click on the cart and you'll be able to check out. Then you can just type in some fake data and doesn't really check that. The main idea is that it's a simple website that you can use for practice testing. And you can see you've added an item to the shopping cart and you can click finish. And then it says, thank you for your order. And uh, you can use Selenium Base to automate that as well, just to take it down from Shadow DOM and complex Wordle solving. 
it's more deterministic because the website is the same every time. It's not like a new item in like a new list of items every day. So if I run PyTest test swag labs, and it'll just do a simple test just so that you can see Selenium base handling all sorts of things. So it's going to log in. It's going to add an item to a cart. It's going to check out and verify. One of the cool things that you can do with Selenium base is slow the test down with demo mode so that you can see exactly what the test is doing as it runs. So if I do uh, PyTest and then the test I want to run and do dash dash demo as a PyTest command line option, it's basically going to highlight the various items that are on the page that it's going to interact with. So you can see that it's highlighting the fields that it's going to interact with. And whenever there's an assertion, it's going to show at the bottom of the screen, assert like CSS selector or here at the bottom, the inventory item that it's checking. So you can actually see not only where it's clicking, where it's typing, but you can see the assertions that are being made so that you can say, oh, if you add an item to a cart that the text says remove on the button instead of add to cart. So it makes it really easy to see uh, what tests are doing, which is very convenient. And you can see that demo mode, it's just, it slows everything down, but it shows you what your test is doing so that you can see everything that's going on. So here it's verifying that, you know, the various buttons are there like cancel. And here it's going to slowly type in uh, the fields that are there. And you can see that's verifying all that, that it verifies that the test all the things t-shirt appeared in the cart. And it's showing all that that's there. So demo mode is one of many available command line options that you can use alongside your Selenium-based tests in order to get more out of the test. If you're wondering about additional options, so let's just go over to the main GitHub page. You can see the PyTest options for Selenium base, you can easily change the browser. So as you saw before, Chrome is the default browser. If you don't specify it, you can change the browser so that it runs with uh, Edge, Firefox, even Safari. Uh, let's see. You can multi-thread the tests by using dash n4. And this is using some built-in PyTest multi-threading. So if you have a lot of tests that you need to run at the same time, uh, PyTest multi-threading is the way to do that. Uh, what you saw earlier was the dashboard with the HTML report that I showed about 15, 10 minutes ago that basically can give you a full report of all your tests after it finishes running. Uh, there are lots of ways to debug tests, such as using the dash dash PDB option, which means that if a test happens to fail, it will pause and then uh, give you a debugger so that you can do uh, live debugging right then. Uh, this will let you rerun failing tests if you want to do that. Uh, there's a recorder option so that it can record tests. And I don't know if I'll have time to show you that, but the key thing here is if you want to use one of the Selenium servers from our sponsors, such as Browser Stack, Sauce Labs, Lambda Test, et cetera, you can run any of your PyTest tests uh, on one of their Selenium grids by specifying the grid server, the key, and the IP address and maybe the port that you'll need. It could be 80, maybe sometimes it's 4444. And if there's authentication, that is in the key. And I'll essentially let you run your tests on browser stack, sauce labs, Lambda tests, et cetera, and utilize all of their advanced features. 
Uh, there's also Selenium-based mobile mode, which will kick off Chromium's mobile device emulator so that if you have a test that has a mobile version of a website, you can just do that. And it will use default mobile device metrics. So if I just do, uh, let's see, PyTest, my first test dash dash mobile, that is going to go back to the sauce demo site, but it's going to use the mobile version which as you can see, it's uh, slightly different from before. And you'll be able to run a mobile test, not just the regular web test, just by adding the dash dash mobile as a command line option. And of course, there's a lot more options that you didn't get to see here, uh, but there is a full list on the Selenium Base page on GitHub. The dashboard looks like this. So if there's a lot of tests, you can see your failing tests, uh, your passing tests. Uh, here's what it looks like with the, uh, you know, some failing tests at the top and there's logs so that if there is a test failure, you can see what went wrong. And we didn't run any failing tests right now, but I'm just gonna quickly do Hi, test test suite and then dash dash html equals report html and dash dash dashboard and dash dash rs i'm just going to do a quick one more quick uh suite of four like two second tests so that you can see what the logs look like when a test fails and it'll take screenshots and all that and give you all the info so here we have a dashboard.html. So if we were to open that inside a new window, you can see that here it ran four tests where two failed and two passed. And inside the data folder, you'll have things such as basic test info, which shows you the tests that you ran the last page that it was on, the browser it used, the driver, uh, and the date that it ran with my time zone, et cetera, and then the stack trace. And the most important thing, it will have the screenshot right here that you can click on it and see what went wrong. All right, let me go back to the uh, chat. So we have Q&A. Let's see, we have a question from Vishnu uh, in the word puzzle. How is it identifying yellow color and proceeding further? And how is it identifying green color? OK, so inside the website, when you're running Wordle, so I'm just going to quickly get that back so that we can see oh, chat window is blocking the screen. Oh, there we go. OK, so. Uh, on the website itself, we're going to quickly, I'm going to show you how that looks. So if we go to Wordle, it's going to quickly jump directly to it. If you, if you guessed a word such as stuff, I think the answer was bluff, and we're going to do enter. If we right click and inspect the element, it'll actually tell you whether or not it was a green tile or a yellow tile. Because if you inspect it inside there, it will be in the HTML. So let's see, data title, data state equals correct. There, that is the main thing there. So if you have a word in the correct place or a letter in the correct place, it's going to show a data state property equals correct. Now, if it is in the wrong place, it'll say, uh, or if it's not, the letter is not there at all. If I go here, data state equals absent because there is no uh, T in the word. So if I were to uh, do, let's do blunt where letters aren't going to be in the correct place. You'll see, oh, that's not a good one because uh, let's do, here we go. There's a yellow one. So here the U is in the incorrect place. So you can do data state equals present. 
And inside the HTML, based on that, you can say, okay, the word or the letter U is not in the correct place, but it is in the word. So the CSS selector for that would be data state present there. All right, let's see. Uh, let's back to Q&A. Uh, any more questions, technical? All right, well, we're gonna do a one more quick thing uh, for the recorder so that you can see how the recorder works. Uh, let's see. I'm just trying to, there we go. Let's move that out of the way. If we do S space recorder, it's going to start the recorder desktop app. And let's say we want to do a quick recording. So let's do saucedemo.com and we're going to click record. It's going to go here and if I, copy standard user in here and I copy secret sauce in here and I do a login and I'm going to add three items to the cart and then once that's set I'm going to click on the cart item and I can verify that things are there so I'm going to uh, basically, I could verify that that says it's $15.99, that's $49, and that's that. And then I am going to click checkout. I'm going to type in hello, Selenium, and then one, two, three, four, five, continue. And then I'm going to click finish. And I want to verify that it says thank you for your order. So I'm going to switch into assert element mode. And then once I am done recording the actions, I can type C. And it's going to generate the recorded uh, script. So this is just one quick way where you can use the Selenium based recorder to generate a full script. So you saw here that I went to this website. Uh, it, it saw that we clicked the item and then it generated the script. So that will allow you to quickly uh, play back the script that you just saw so that you can quickly create tests. And if you need to generate a new test on the fly, you can use the recorder to do that. So here you have it playing back a recording. So the Selenium based recorder is sort of like Selenium IDE, except uh, it's Python based. Uh, let's see if I can answer anyone's questions. So that uh, pretty much uh, covers everything. Uh, hi, Nidhi, how are you doing? Thanks for the session, Michael. Anyone yep. have any question? I didn't get to cover uh, everything, but as you saw that you can use uh, Selenium based and Python and Selenium to solve Wordle and interact with the website easily, interact with Shadow DOM, and you can generate scripts easily with the recorder and use additional command line options so that you can see reports and et cetera, or demo mode so that you can see exactly uh, what your test is doing. And you can easily connect to a grid server for say browser stack, sauce labs, Lambda test, et cetera, our sponsors here so that you can run your Selenium based Python tests on one of their grids. Thanks, Michael, for sharing your experience with us today.